For more, we're joined now by Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis of New York to talk about this. It's good to see you again. Great to be with you. Thank you. And before we get to the speech, uh, I mentioned this last night when we were live on the air. I want to ask you about this moment that you had with the president right afterwards, because it's hard to get the president's attention. Obviously, you're on conflicting parties here. Uh, can you tell us what exactly this was about? And it looked like you handed him something. Give us the story there. Sure. Uh, well, I went I went directly up to the president. I saw an opportunity to, to talk to him, and I told him that he needs to go to the border. So, Mr. President, you need to go to the border. You need to support our Customs and Border Patrol agents. You need to see what I saw and hear what I heard when I was there just a couple of weeks ago. And I think that it is critical that he gets down there right away uh, because this is a crisis. So there's a national security aspect to this with the cartels running our border and overrunning our CBP agents. And uh, that is what I urged him to do in that moment that I was able to get his attention. He did ask me for my card, my phone number. I said he wanted to discuss the issue further. And to their credit, they did have the White House counsel call me today in which I did explain further uh, what we were able to see and hear while we were at the border. Uh, but you know, look, I, I hope something actually gets done about it because what I saw a couple of weeks ago was not just a humanitarian crisis, during in a public health crisis, the way that these children were jammed into these facilities. Sure. Um, and and the, the irony that they had us sitting so far apart yesterday when uh, at these facilities, as you see in those photographs, children lying on top of each other uh, during uh, what the president says is a, a, a COVID outbreak. So it's, it's a complete hypocrisy what is happening. It's all happening at taxpayer expense. Mm. And we can resolve this issue today by just going back to the policies of President Trump. No, they can't. We all know why they can't do that. As, as sad as it is to say, it's all politics. Um, but you're right. That would actually solve the problem. I want to broaden this conversation out. I want to bring in Congressman Pat Fallon of Texas. Sir, good to have you on. Rob, thank you. You've got a great show. I love watching it. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Congressman. Uh, I, I want to get your take on immigration. Uh, this, this is what Biden had to say last night on the subject during the speech. I kept my commitment to send a comprehensive immigration bill to the United States Congress. If you believe we need to secure the border, pass it, because it has a, a lot of money for high-tech border security. If you believe in a pathway to citizenship, pass it. So he's kind of throwing it back to Congress here. What, what do you make of that comment, sir? Well, I don't believe him, unfortunately. And I love the fact that Nicole confronted him on this, because thanks to Joe Biden, the United States government is facilitating one of the largest uh, human trafficking yeah. and uh, it really it's sexual slavery operations in the world. What's happening here is their cartels winning, Rob, because they're, they're supporting this for two reasons. One, they love to distract about half of our Border Patrol agents, literally having them babysit. I mean, we visited the Donna facility. that's supposed to have 250 people as a capacity. They had 5,700 the day we were there, 3,700 unaccompanied minors. We have our Border Patrol agents changing diapers while the drug cartels are easily slipping in methamphetamine and fentanyl and cocaine into our country. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, they're also making money because the folks that come from the Northern Triangle in Central America don't have a lot of money, so they work it off when they get here. And the cartels tell them what cities to go to. Sure. And then how do you think some 20-year-old or 20-something gals are going to work that off? Mm -hmm. It's going to be sexual trafficking. And I don't know if he's just naive or he doesn't care. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're virtue signaling, mostly, is, is what they care about right now is politics and keeping the far left on their side. Um, Congresswoman Maliotakis, I want to go to policing uh, and also race, this rhetoric of systemic racism in this country. I thought Senator Scott did a really good job last night of making clear that just because racist actions happen, it doesn't make this country racist. What did you make of that speech? I think Senator uh, Scott was on the mark. Uh, he basically... Uh, described honestly what is happening in our country and that uh, we can uh, come together and should come together to address the real issues. Look, we can fix the immigration crisis. We can address the security issue at our borders. We can certainly look at the policing. And, and Senator Scott has a, a bill that has a lot of Republican support that would really put in place a lot of the policies that the NYPD proactively put in place a number of years ago. Um, and, you know, we can have a transportation infrastructure bill uh, as well, but we have to be able to work together. The issue is that the president says that he wants to work bipartisan fashion, yet he doesn't act that way mm -hmm. uh, in between the speeches. 
And I would say that, you know, we should be looking to address these issues collectively. We know that there's that common ground there, but there needs to be a willingness. I think the Democrats are more interested in holding on to these as issues to make them political footballs for their own narrative as course. opposed to actually solving the problem. And that's the real issue here. No, it certainly is. I think that's very obvious at this point. Congressman Fallon, uh, the president, you know, promised to unify this country. All of this talk about race is doing the exact opposite, and they are fanning these flames. I don't think we've ever been as divided, not at least in my memory, and you know, I'm not that old, but I mean, this is really bad for the last 30 years or so. Uh, this is a very, very, very bad moment. What do you make of it? You know, I, I agree with you that it, over the last 30 years, it's gotten worse, and in the 1980s, I really thought that we were making progress and things would get a lot better. Yeah. But when, you know, it's supposed to be e service unum, and what the Democrats are doing is really the, uh, the bidding of the Chinese communist government. The Chinese want us divided, and they're, they're doing that. I mean, if you look at policing in this country, there are 375 million police interactions with civilians. Yeah. And yet there are uh, about a, a couple hundred, depending uh, every year, a couple hundred fatal, fatal shootings. But with 58,000 police are assaulted every year. Right. 15,000 of them are re require hospitalization. They show incredible restraint and incredible professionalism. And in 2017, Harvard, and then in 2019, the National Academy of Science did studies, and they found no racial bias in police shootings. But the left doesn't want facts and data no. and evidence and proof. They just want emotion. It's, it's, it's so embarrassing. The rhetoric right now and just how dumb this country is on this story is just so embarrassing, I think. Congressman Fallon, Congresswoman Maliatakis, thank you both for joining us tonight. Good to see you. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. God bless. Take care. All right.